Hey, what's up, Stock Compounders? Brad here. So about a week ago, I did a video on Micron and why I like Micron, sort of the, the tailwinds behind uh, Micron, particularly Micron stock. And I got a great comment that asked, hey, can you invert the story and do a video on why people shouldn't invest in Micron? And I thought that was a great idea. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm going to kind of highlight the reasons that my, maybe Micron isn't a great stock to own or a great stock to buy now. So let's get into this. So one great place to look for information about why Micron not be a great investment is to look at a short write-up on Value Investors Club. So this is from July 2018. And I just want to point out in here the big argument against Micron in this write-up. Uh, the headwind facing Micron is China. Uh, without getting too much into the political dynamics, we believe it's fair to say that the Chinese president is focused on turning China into a global economic and technological superpower on par with the United States. Um, Semiconductors, in particular, are a critical element of the plan since they are China's top import and are used to feed its large electronics manufacturing sector. In order to, in order to make itself more self-sufficient and less reliant on global trade partners, China is setting out to produce more semiconductors at home. To do this, it must catch up technologically to the current market leaders, invest capital to build its own semiconductor industry, and thwart the current large semiconductor companies. Recently, China is doing all three. So the big issue here is, you know, China is more and more interested in manufacturing its own kind of uh, memory and storage products in China. Uh, which would affect Micron because, you know, Micron exports a lot of its uh, chips, a lot of its memory and storage products to China. It's a, it's a big customer. Uh, you can also see here there's litigation happening against Micron. Uh, so, you know, there, there's, some, there's some hair on Micron here. Uh, this was back in 2018, certainly. Um, it's a little bit different today, but obviously there's still concerns. There's a lot of uncertainty about how China fits in to Micron's kind of long-term growth prospects. Uh, another great place to look at uh, potential issues with Micron is the annual report. So this is the annual report from 2019. Um, <clears throat> and you can see here risk factors, risks, to the business, um, right, could cause actual results or events to differ materially from those contained in any forward-looking statements. Any of these factors could have a material adverse effect on our business, blah, blah, blah. So there are 15 pages here of risk factors. Uh, and, you know, if, if you're considering buying Micron, it's worth of understanding, you know, how, how big a factor could these risks be uh, in a long-term investment, investment in Micron. Obviously, there's volatility in selling prices for uh, chips, uh, memory and storage products. You know, we know that it's, it's a very cyclical business, pretty large uh, price swings from year to year. And you can see here, percent change in average selling prices, just how big those swings can be for both DRAM and NAND. Uh, just a few more. We may be unable to maintain or improve gross margins, highly competitive markets, uh, may be unable to generate sufficient cash flows to fund our operations, you know, the necessary capital expenditures um, to come out with new and improved products. So, you know, the list goes on. Take a look at this if you're interested in, you know, what, what potentially could go wrong with an investment in Micron. Uh, and then this is a, a thread from my recent Micron video. And I really uh, 
appreciated this question. So companies, the big cloud storage companies, right? Could the leading cloud players, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, manufacture memory or storage components in-house, right? Uh, the single biggest capital expense for these data centers is memory. So, you know, they could be highly motivated to uh, figure out how to manufacture these products in-house. And I like this comment a lot too from old school millennial. Um, at least half the IP is useless to hyperscale cloud. The reason is tech vendors like Micron have to build their technology to fit the needs of the masses and not just the needs of single customers. Uh, this is why cloud providers found better ROI in building their own routing and switching platforms versus acquiring companies that manufactured those. Uh, they could design from the ground up just what they needed for their products. Um, the tech is way more efficient for the use case and less expensive uh, if, if they go about it that way. So that was that was interesting. Uh, and I put that question out to Corner of Berkshire and Fairfax. And I can't bring it up uh, on the, the screen here because, you know, you, you have to pay for a membership. But I'm just going to read a couple replies. I asked, is there a case to be made for the big cloud companies bringing memory manufacturing in-house since it's such a large capital expense? How would that impact the long-term investment case for Micron? So I got two answers to that. One, I think the more likely scenario is that China gets into memory manufacturing at some point. Now, whether the rest of the world will buy chips, memory, electronics made in China, ask Apple, I guess. Then the other response was, if it makes if it made economic sense, I am sure the Apples, HPs, Dells would have done that a long time ago for all computer parts. CapEx for manufacturing is not among the best things to show investors these days. No one is investing to build memory factories other than the Chinese government for non-economic reasons, which goes back to that short from Value Investors Club. Um, so I don't really have a way to gauge how likely it is that uh, these big tech companies are going to take uh, manufacturing of memory and storage components in-house. Uh, but the, the smart folks at Corner of Berkshire and Fairfax seem to think that there's probably better uses for that money, uh, at least from an inve from attracting investors' standpoint. Uh, one of actually the top performing video on YouTube around Micron uh, analysis has been Sven Carlin. Uh, Sven did like a 28 minute video uh, with with a really smart guy uh, who runs a channel investing with JYK. Okay, I think he lives in China and they had a very thoughtful discussion about Micron and the big way that uh, that this guy was valuing Micron was on a price to book basis. And essentially, whenever the price to book would get to, to two or higher, he would short Micron. And then when it got down to around 0.7 price to book, that's when he was more interested in buying. Um, so if you take that, and I reached out to him, I, I sent him a comment on his latest video. I said, you know, what's your take on Micron at 1.4 price to book? Because they did the video back in early 2019. You know, obviously, we're approaching the end of 2020. So potentially a fair bit has changed with uh, how he's looking at Micron. And he said, well, 1.4, it's not a bad entry point. Uh, not great, not bad. Uh, and he also mentioned... Uh, the Chinese are probably going out of the picture in terms of DRAM and NAND production due to potential U.S. sanctions, which is good news for Micron. So I thought that was interesting. But if we look here, you know, on a price-to-book basis, what, what has Micron been trading uh, in terms of price-to-book? Right now it's 1.5. I think just a week ago, maybe less than that, it was 1.4. Uh, but we've got 1.5 now. So if you go back, 
you know, price to book has really fluctuated. Um, you know, boom bust cycles for Micron between 0.75, which was the low in the last 10 years, and it's gotten up to 3.5. More recently, it's kind of been trading with an average of 1.65 over the last five years. That's the five year average. So 1.5, you know, it's a little below the five year average, still not super compelling. Uh, we know Pabrai bought in around $38 per share. Uh, Li Lu, probably around $40, $42 per share. Uh, we're at around 50 now. So, you know, it's a little higher than I'd like to see uh, before I'm, I'm interested in adding to my position. Uh, you know, 1.5, it, it's, it's not terrible, particularly if, if we believe in the tailwinds uh, behind Micron. But that's not what this video is about. This is about what is the bear case for a Micron. So forget all that. Uh, the bear case here, you know, 1.5, not, not a super compelling price to book based on the last five to 10 years. Um, let's see, what else do I have for you guys? Uh, so there's not really any brand loyalty with Micron, at least from consumers. Uh, you know, in, with your computers, usually you can see the sticker Intel inside. At least that's building some, some brand, um, you know, brand equity, brand loyalty, potentially with Intel. It's getting into the minds of consumers. Uh, people who have Micron components in their phones or their computers, they don't even know they have Micron components in their phones and computers. So, you know, that's, that's part of why people look at these Micron products as commodities. Um, so that's, that's not great for a business to, to not be building that, uh, that brand name. Uh, it's, it's tough to keep up with competition, you know. It's really a cutting edge industry where if Micron, you know, isn't an innovator, isn't at the leading edge of innovation, uh, they could fall behind and they could fall behind fairly quickly in an industry like that if their competitors you know are coming up with better products uh, it can be hard to catch up in an industry like this so you know that's a potential threat to the business can they maintain that leadership in uh, in product innovation uh, the pandemic that we're currently in right if the pandemic really leads to a depression uh, there's going to be a lot less consumer spending on things like phones, smartphones, computers, uh, and less spending on that stuff means, you know, Micron isn't gonna be able to sell as many products and that could uh, really hurt the bottom line uh, of Micron. So there's a lot of uncertainty around, you know, what's coming in the next three months, six months, one year for the economy. Um, you know, China, the IP theft, subsidies of memory storage manufacturing, we've already kind of covered uh, the potential for China to hurt the um, profitability of Micron. Uh, yeah, I think, I think that's about all I wanted to cover, guys. Um, so the big issues are China and can Micron really keep innovating? Uh, those, those are the issues facing Micron as I see it. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. Just wanted to invert the story. I, I shared my bull case for Micron uh, about five days ago. I wanted to kind of give some thought to potential bear cases for Micron to, to kind of balance things out and uh, not fall into the trap of getting overly enthusiastic about um, Micron or any company. I think this is good to do with any investments that that you're considering making or have already made just to, you know, have, have both arguments um, at the forefront. What, 
what could go right with this company, what could go wrong with this company, and how do I weigh both of those things in my uh, investment case. So that's all I got for today, guys. I will see you in the next video. Actually, before you go, let me know what your bear arguments are for Micron. What What's keeping you away or what's maybe making you lose sleep at night a little bit if you are already invested in Micron? Let us know. I really appreciate uh, the insights that you guys bring to, to these videos. So let us know. All right, guys, I will see you in the next video. Take care.